Season three of Creator Lab is all about the importance of community. This season, we're turning our intentions into action by building a creator community that can tell the stories of small businesses right here in New York City. In this episode, we're putting that idea to the test by pairing a creator with a small business. First up, Taylor Banky, whose work focuses on using story to create social change. So one of the ways that you describe yourself, that I see you describe mm -hmm. yourself, is you tell stories that create social change. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this room's not very big, so you've probably noticed that there's an elephant in it. I tell stories, you know, about my experiences and about issues that I care about, and I invite my audience to kind of respond to them and, and talk about them too, and we sort of share in that community ways that we can make the world better, or try. You hit on the keyword, the buzzword <laughs> of season three of Creator Lab, community. Mm -hmm. What does community mean to you? You know, I'm not making videos because that's, you know, my whole livelihood or to get, you know, a ton of views. It's to kind of work through ideas that I care about and, and share those with people. And so my community helps like kind of informs what I want to make and, and the ideas that I want to put into my work. My community helps, like, kind of informs what I want to make and the ideas that I want to put into my work. Your YouTube channel is called It's Radish Time. It's Radish Time. Mm -hmm. And you call your audience there or your yeah, the the Radish Collective. So It's Radish Time is like it's one of those cases where you make a username in like eighth grade and it just sticks with you forever. Hi guys, my name is Taylor and welcome to my channel. Everyone has it. <laughs> we all know. Yeah. Yeah, I I keep like on my like community tab will be like. Could, should I change it to my name? And they're like, no, keep my scratch time. They love it. But um, yeah, it's like, it's it's just as much my audience, my community's project as mine. It wouldn't, you know, I put up a video and like the most rewarding part of it is like the comments. Like I tell a story and I get a ton of like paragraphs back of how somebody took my idea and, you know, thought about it through the lens of their own life. And that's why I do it. You know, it, it it's not just to sort of be like, Here's my stuff one way. It's that back and forth that, that makes it matter to me. What does New York City's creator community look like? I feel like it's it's kind of weird and special in that like this is not at all one industry town. Like most of my friends aren't creators, but like we're all kind of, you know, existing and doing different things and you get us all in a room together and everybody's doing a completely different thing. Like everybody's got their own lane but there's still a lot that we can learn from each other. And so I think it's it's really cool because um, there's it's just a lot of unique voices and unique perspectives. It's not, you know, a really kind of cookie cutter thing. And, you know, we, we still can kind of keep getting weirder and, and more interesting when we talk to each other. One thing that I'm trying to learn more from my community is like, how do I actually expand the the technical part of my process and like how do I get better at lighting and like color grading and all that kind of stuff but I think that you can have a really beautiful visual and if it doesn't have a story behind it it doesn't matter. Creator Lab is created yeah. by Adobe mm -hmm. as a as a way to sort of highlight how their tools help people like you mm -hmm. and me put our ideas out there yeah. and build communities mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, and you talked about how you how you work with your community a little bit to like work mm -hmm. on the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you mentioned is editing and color correction. Color mm -hmm. correction is like the focal point mm -hmm. of this episode. Yeah. So can you just tell me a little bit about what that process looks like for you when you're using Premiere, when you're using, when mm -hmm. you're doing color, like do you work on color correction? There's so many people who have made really great like tutorials and stuff. And so I'm, I feel like I'm always like editing with like one window open of like watching people's like tutorials and that's how I learn. But I, I do, you know, color correction for every video. Like as a woman of color, it's really, really important for me to get my skin tone right. I wanna be able to represent myself as authentically as possible. And so changing the saturation or, you know, making sure that the yellows and the, you know, the pinks in my skin tone are coming out. Like that's really important to me. But, you know, I always think it's interesting, like filmmakers are able to use it a lot more, I think, artistically and creatively to be able to tell part of their story. It's funny, like I went to film school and there was a whole section on color and the importance of color to help tell your story and yeah. what that means. 
And as someone who's shooting all over the city in different locations, inside, outside, trying to use color to create a specific tone in my videos is really important and something that Premiere makes a lot easier, right? Because you can color match from one shot to the next. Um, you can use LUTs to sort of create a certain specific look. A little trick that I learned recently is if there's a movie that you like or a picture that you like from somewhere in pop culture, you can drag that into your project, throw it in the timeline, and then use the color match feature to apply that same color look to your own video. Sounds like it would make it really easy. There you go. In this season of Creator Lab, Adobe is partnering with 368 and GoFundMe to connect creators who are great storytellers with small businesses that have great stories to tell. Last episode, we talked to Casey and New York Nico, and he told me that we should go check out the dress shop in the East Village. The owner of the dress shop, Saruj, has a really incredible story, and Saruj invited us to go there to make a video about what she's up to. Use that video to launch a GoFundMe to hopefully raise more, get more support, awareness about the business, and hopefully help her through what has been a trying year. That's my whole thing that I'm about is using the online community to make your physical community better. So it sounds like a great way to do that. Kelsey Little, who's my friend from GoFundMe, she is the head of storytelling for GoFundMe. She runs their podcast, which is really great, the GoFundMe Heroes podcast. She knows everything that goes into telling a great story for GoFundMe. So let's FaceTime her, see what she has to say, and maybe she'll give us some tips before we head out to the dress shop. Hello. Hello, Jack. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm amazing. It's great to see you. Yeah, you too. Looks like you're in a studio of sorts. We're in a studio here in 368. And I'm calling to introduce you to Taylor, who has just been assigned to make a video about a small business in New York City. And nobody knows how to do storytelling on GoFundMe better than you. So I wanted to introduce you to Taylor, who has some questions. Hi there. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What are some of the things that make a story really stand out? The amazing thing is that you're already one half the battle because you are an amazing storyteller and you tell human stories, uh, which is a number one thing that I try to recommend to anyone telling a GoFundMe story. You know, there's the fundraising need, but at the root of that, it's a human being who needs the support of other human beings. So really just displaying to donors what sort of emotional impact their donation could make in this person's life. You know, something we were talking about is sometimes you start a GoFundMe and you share it around with your family and friends, but what would make it cross over to, you know, people who might not know you or may never have even been inside of this business before? I think really it's including not just the the current situation and um you know the the immediate fundraising need but really going into the backstory and painting a full picture of the person and their life i love it I, this is great yeah. so i think that we should hit the road How long you've been in this space and how you got started? We started in 1977, me and my husband. I feel like you have a good story. Yeah, customers came in and everybody wanted to talk about how important and special this place was, so I've got so much to work with. Good luck. Yeah. I'll check in with you in a few days next week. We'll see how the edit's going. Now, editing time. All right, see ya. See you, Taylor.